This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. Well, this is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. Well, this is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. And I pray that we are alive. Yes, we are. There comes Cindy. Good morning, Miss Cindy. God bless you today in a wonderful way. And Miss Yolinda, here she comes, just as faithful as can be. She loves these two ladies, love the Word of God. Can't get enough, can you? I can't either. And here comes Miss Connie with her usual beautiful Hebrew greeting of shalom. Shalom, peace, God's peace. The peace that passes all understanding, right? And so, ladies, while we wait for a little few more to come on this April 25, April 25, boy, we're winding the old month down, aren't we? April 25, you may get ready, Judges, the book of Judges, which Scott has taught us, is Shoftim, Shoftim in Hebrew, and we are on chapter 4, Judges 4. Connie's put it on there for you so that you can look if you uh, just come on. And uh, I have really been contemplating this whole thing this morning. There comes Miss Melissa. Faithful as can be with Kathy's graphics, which are awesome. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Anyway, I've been, you know, I sang, This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. But I tell you what, in Judges, we are reading how Israel sins and sins and sins. And in this chapter, that, that's my subtitle. What was my subtitle? More sin, more deliverers. And these deliverers we're going to read about today, I mean, God had them murder people to get them out of the way. And then the land had peace, okay? Starting back, it starts off with when Ehud was dead. Well, if you remember, and I'm going to remind you about Ehud, Ehud came and he was up there visiting the king in his private chambers and he said to him I have a message to you from God okay and so uh, Eglon arose to receive this and Ehud reached with his left hand took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly even the hilt went in after the blade and the fat closed over the blade for he did not draw the dagger out of his body and his entrails came out. I mean, we're talking about a real nasty looking scene here and definitely a murder. Okay, Ehud escaped and um, after him came Shamgar, who also killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox goad, not a pretty sight. And he also delivered Israel, okay? So here we are, y'all. Get ready for more because we are living in this great New Testament age of love, love, love. And, you know, sometime or other here, uh, God's going to have somebody do in some of these enemies. And then we're going to wind ourselves clear to Revelation 20. I was reading all that this morning. Of the, the Battle of Armageddon. The worst bloody battle of all is yet to come. So it's called walk in the spirit. It's called learn God's voice. Know him and know what directions he is giving you personally. Because sometimes people don't understand at all what you're doing until the final victory comes and then some people will say oh, okay I understand now do you get me okay so let's begin judges 4 and we move on into 5 2 here shoftim judges and when Ehud 
was dead, the children of Israel again, again, after he delivered them and they had rest and peace again. Did they stick with it? Nope. Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. In the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Yabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Haroshet Hagoim. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. We have this same pattern, don't we? They sin, we do it too. We sin, and then we repent, realize we cry out to the Lord. He's faithful, he comes, doesn't he? We feel his forgiveness and cleansing of his blood. And does that cause us to not sin again? No, nope. pretty soon something trips us up. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Yabin had 900 chariots of iron. You see how intimidated they got. And for 20 years, he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now, Deborah, oh, we're going to have a great lady, a prophetess, also a deliverer, a leader into the battle. Hear that, ladies? A lady. Now, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm tree of Deborah. <laughs> the tree became known for her, the palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel, in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Nephtali, and said to him, <clears throat> listen what she says, has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor, take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Nephtali and of the sons of Zebulun, and against you I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Yabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, all 900 are coming, at the river Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. She's saying, get up and go to war. And Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. He's saying that to the woman, the D Deborah. But there's got to be, he must recognize this incredible anointing upon her. And maybe he just feels like, I'm not sure I'm the one. Will you go with me? And so she said, I will surely go with you. She feels led to go. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. She prophesies that. And we're going to read how that happens. How about that? And then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Nephtali to Kadesh. He went up with 10,000 men under his command, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber, the Kenite of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, Moshe, had separated himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent near the terebent tree at Za'anim, which is beside Kadesh. And they reported to Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor. So Sisera gathered together all his chariots, 900, 900 chariots of iron are on their way, and all the people who were with him from Heroshet Hagoim to the river Kishon. And then Deborah, Deborah says to Barak, up, for this is the day in which the Lord has 
delivered Sisera into your hand? Has not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak, he, he knows that Deborah's got a word. She's got a word. So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. And the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera alighted from his chariot and fled away on foot. Fled away. It's down to my life or yours. And he runs. But Barak pursued the chariots and the army as far as Heroshet Hagoyim. And all the army of Sisera fell because God said so. And he had given a word to Deborah that this is the day. Get up. Don't wait till tomorrow. This is the day. And the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. Wow. Here's a lady walking in the spirit of God, isn't she? However, Sisera had fled away on foot to the tent of Yael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Yabin, king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Yael, this lady, this lady went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me. Do not fear. And when he had turned aside with her into the tent, she covered him with a blanket. <clears throat> and then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she didn't do water. She opened up a jug of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him. And he said to her, stand at the door of the tent. And if any man comes and inquires of you and says, is there any man here? You shall say no. He's laying down all covered up, instructing her to stand at the door and lie for him. Okay, let's read on. And then Yael, Heber's wife, took a tent peg. Listen. I'm sure this was a huge tent peg. I mean, they lived in tents, okay? They, they didn't have little pup tents. They had house tents. She took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple. And it went down into the ground. We are talking the pegs going here clear through that man's head and on into the ground. That's how big the peg. And it went down into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary. And she's doing all this in the name of the Lord. So he died. And then, as Barak pursued Sisera, Yael came out to meet him and said to him, Come, come. I will show you the man whom you seek. And when he went into her tent, there lay Sisera, dead, with the peg in his temple. So on that day, God subdued Yabin, Yabin, king of Canaan, in the presence of the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel grew stronger and stronger against Yabin, king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Yabin, king of Canaan. And we move along to chapter 5. Chapter 5. And then Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, they got up and sang a song all about it. Got this? They got up and celebrated. Sang a song on that day saying, 
when leaders lead in Israel, when the people willingly offer themselves, bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens poured. The clouds also poured water. The mountains gushed before the Lord. This Sinai before the Lord God of Israel in the days of Shamgar, son of Anat, in the days of Yael, this lady we just read about, the highways were deserted and the travelers walked along the byways. Village life ceased. It ceased in Israel until I, Deborah, arose. Arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods and then there was war in the gates. Not a shield or spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is with the rulers of Israel who offered themselves willingly with the people. Bless the Lord. Speak, you who ride on white donkeys, who sit in judges' attire, and who walk along the road. Far from the noise of the archers among the watering places, there they shall recount the righteous acts of the Lord, the righteous acts for his villagers in Israel. And then the people of the Lord shall go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, sing a song. Arise, Barak and lead your captives away, O son of Obinoam. And then the survivors came down, the people against the nobles. The Lord came down for me against the mighty when Ephraim were those whose roots were in Amalek. After you, Benjamin, Benhamim, with your peoples, from Machir, rulers came down, and from Zebulon, those who bear the recruiter's staff. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. As Issachar, so was Barak, sent into the valley under his command. Among the divisions of Reuben, there were great resolves of heart. Wow! Why did you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the pipings of the flocks? The, maybe it's pippings. I think it's pipings. The divisions of Reuben have great searchings of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And why did Dan remain on ships? Asher continued at the seashore and stayed by his inlets. Zebulon is a people who jeopardize their lives to the point of death. Neptali also on the heights of the battlefield. The kings came and fought, and then the kings of Canaan fought in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no spoils of silver. They fought from the heavens. The stars from their courses fought against Sisera. The torrent of Kishon swept them away. That ancient torrent, the torrent of Kishon. Oh, my soul, march on in strength. And then the horse's hooves pounded the galloping, galloping of his steeds. Curse, Meros, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its inhabitants bitterly, because they did not come to help of the Lord. 
to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed among women is Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. Blessed is she among women in tents. He asked for water. She gave him milk. She brought out cream in a lordly bowl. She stretched out her hand to the tent peg, her right hand to the workman's hammer. She pounded Sisera. She pierced his head. She split and struck through his temple. I mean, they're singing this. At her feet, he sank, he fell, he lay still. At her feet, he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell dead. The mother of Sisera looked through the window and cried out through the lattice, Why is his chariot so long in coming? And he's not going to come, is he? Why tarries the clatter of his chariots? Oh, she is realizing this mother. They didn't win. Her wisest ladies answered her. Yes, she answered herself. Are they not finding and dividing the spoil? To every man a girl or two for Sisera, Plunder of dyed garments, plunder of garments embroidered and dyed, two pieces of dyed embroidery for the neck of the looter. Thus let all your enemies perish, O Lord, but let those who love him be like the sun, S-U-N, when it comes out in full strength. And the last line says so the land had rest for 40 years how about that y'all all right we're going to move right along to the new covenant to Luke Silas which is Luke chapter 22 picking up with verse 35 Luke 22 35 and he said to them, Jesus said to them, When I sent you without money bag, knapsack, or sandals, did you lack anything? So they said, Nothing. And they didn't lack. God provided. And then he said to them, But now, he who has a money bag, let him take it. And likewise a knapsack. And he who has no sword, listen to this, he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Now we are quoting what Jesus means from Isaiah 53 verse 12. And he was numbered with the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. Oh, he's telling them every way he can tell them, isn't he? So they said, Lord, look, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. And coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed and his disciples also followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and he prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. He said those words, and then he immediately strengthened himself. 
because he was praying. His father answered in ways, apparently, to strengthen him, to say no. That I can't take this cup. You will have to drink it. Not my will, but yours be done. And then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. So God sends more help. Help Jesus can see, an angel. Don't you want to know how the angel strengthened him? And being in agony, our Lord was in agony. He prayed more earnestly. Oh, there's a wonderful encouragement for all of us. Because we've never prayed until this sentence has happened that I know of anybody. And then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. And then he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And while he was still speaking, Behold, a multitude, <clears throat> and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those around him saw what was going to happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered and said, Permit even this. He say, no, let this happen. This has to happen. I have to be the sacrifice for you on the cross. And he touched his ear and healed him right in the middle of that multitude has come to get him. And this guy's ear is cut off. Jesus heals his ear. And then Jesus said to the chief priest, the captains of the temple, and the elders who had come to him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Wow, can you picture all that? We read, we go right on. It's, it's hard for me to go on. I'm all involved in what's happening. We go right on to Psalm 94. Psalm 94. Oh, Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. Oh, God. To whom vengeance belongs, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Render punishment to the proud. Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked triumph? I mean, can you believe we're reading this after what we just read in the Old and the New Testaments? It's just God's timing. They utter speech and speak insolent things. All the workers of iniquity boast in themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger 
and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, the Lord does not see, nor does the God of Jacob understand. Oh, really? Oh, really, you overproud ones, to say that? Understand, you senseless among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? And he who formed the eye, shall he not see? He who instructs the nations, shall he not correct? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are futile. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law, that you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance, but judgment will return to the righteousness. Got that? That's beautiful. But judgment will return to righteousness. And all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence instead of speaking up. If I say, my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity, which devises evil by law, have fellowship with you? Uh, let's read that question again. Shall the throne of iniquity, which devises evil by law, have fellowship with you? They gather together against the life of the righteous and condemn innocent blood. Uh, that's got to be... <laughs> I mean, that could cover a lot of things, but it definitely covers abortion. And condemn innocent blood. But the Lord has been my defense. And my God, the rock of my refuge, he has brought on them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. The Lord our God shall cut them off. What a powerful psalm. What a powerful psalm. I pray that you read that again for yourself. That's the whole point here. It isn't just listen to Jane. Jane is doing this out of God's putting this on me to stir up the body of Christ to study the word for themselves, to open up these closed Bibles, including mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, before I close with Proverbs chapter 14, verses 33 and 4. Proverbs, if you could get that ready. Proverbs 14, 3 and 4. Um, I, would ask to, I would like to ask my friend Connie, <clears throat> if you would put on there, Connie, the address <clears throat> of that site I gave you last night of all those doctors. Um, it's a site where these doctors are bringing up to date what they are seeing from people who have had the shot. And whether you have or whether you haven't, uh, we should keep up with what truths they are finding out. Okay? 
So you may want to go to it and you may not. It's totally, you pray, you pray and ask the Lord. You ask the Lord. Thank you, Connie. All right, we will wrap it up with Proverbs 14, verses 3 and 4. In the mouth of a fool is a rod of pride. That's a mouthful. In the mouth of a fool is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. The wise hang on to wisdom coming out of their mouth, don't they? Where no oxen are, the trough is clean. <laughs> this is quite a switch from thoughts, isn't it? But much increase comes by the strength of an ox, doesn't it? Look what all the ox does with its life that the farmer uses the ox for. So we don't want a clean trough, do we? We want one that's filled for the ox to eat, drink, because the increase comes by the strength of an ox. Wow. I mean, I don't know. Pray on that one. Maybe there's a whole lot more spiritual meaning there. I kind of wish Scott were here this morning. We could, we could ask him, but Holy Spirit teaches us. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, my goodness, what a morning. And so that I'm not wasting time, let us wrap it up in prayer. And um, I, I pulled out here a note of some prayer requests that I had written. And I, I pray that you all know anytime you have serious prayer requests, please put them down because these are prayer warriors here. This nucleus that comes every day. And we are happy to pray and we believe like Jesus prayed and was strengthened. He was strengthened and God answered sending him an angel to strengthen him to accomplish the cross. Even our Lord, how did he make it there and do it? By prayer. So we will pray believing prayers because we walk by faith. Father God, we all come to you, Lord, just as we are. But we come believing the power of this mighty, mighty weapon you have given us called prayer. So much comes from it. Oh, Lord, we delight in coming to you. And Father God, right off the top, you have said pray first for those in authority. And so, Lord, we begin with your land your country, Israel, your city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and we are obedient, Lord Jesus, to your request to us. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Sha'alu shalom, Jerusalem. And so, Lord, we do, we ask you, please bring peace to Jerusalem, right in the midst of all the threats from their enemies, right in the midst of the pressure of a multitude of strong, ugly, evil, demonic forces that want to take it over, that want to kill off your people, that want to take Jerusalem for themselves. They don't want your people in the land. And so, Lord, we pray mighty prayers to support them, that they be strengthened. And all those, Lord, who you might be bringing to the land today, making Aliyah, coming by plane or however they're getting there, to now live in the land of Israel, to begin a new life. Lord, strengthen them. Help them to quickly learn Hebrew, to quickly understand all of the laws of the land and the customs and quickly 
know where they're to go and what they're to do. Precious God, we hold them up. I'm sure many who are coming, their knees are knocking, saying, I hope I get along. I'm here now. I have to get off this plane. This is it. It's a, it's a very defining moment. And hallelujah for your plan, Lord, to bring your people home from all over the world. Hallelujah. We'd ask, Lord, we pray for the ruler, the leaderships that you have installed right now in Israel. We pray for Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, who's just fighting many battles of his own. And we know that you are there with him, Lord. You are there with all of those that you have in the Knesset. You are there, Lord, with the mayors and, and with all the IDF. All of this Israeli Defense Force. Oh, precious Lord, be with each and every one of them. Cover them with your protection, Lord. We pray, cause them to be where they should be. Cause them to handle every situation the way you want to. Cause that IDF to know if they're to get in their super planes and fly out <clears throat> to any enemy. Oh, Lord, we are praying that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide and rule in every situation. In America, Lord, we hold up America. And, Lord, I'd ask you to be with this administration. You have allowed them to be there. Lord, what can we say? Oh, we need to return to praying in the Spirit. It is in the spirit. There is power in the tongue. There is a certain place in our brain that only the baptism of the Holy Spirit moves. And I'm going to get that out. They did a great study uh, at Oral Roberts University years ago when, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came. They studied it to see what, what, what about the brain? What happens within a person? And I'm going to bring that forth in this day and age when we are having things alter our very DNA. Precious God, we need to once again exercise praying in the spirit along with the understanding as we are instructed in Corinthians. Father God, we'd ask that you'd have your will and way today in America and cause all of us, Lord, to strengthen ourselves, even asking angels to help strengthen us to follow you straight like an arrow, to walk in the Spirit, talk in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, reach out to others in the Spirit. Help us, Lord. And I would like to lift up and, and thank you for healing our sister Luann, who's here with us. And uh, we bless you, Father God. We'd ask you would totally complete every bit of healing she needs. And Lord, I hold up Stephen, Mel's nephew, and we rebuke this cancer. We say, die, every cell that's cancerous within his body and be washed from his body. And Father, please let new healthy cells multiply today within Stephen's body that he would gain strength. He would gain strength and faith that people would be encouraged who are praying for Stephen. Lord, I hold up President Trump and Melania. I hold them up. Melania's birthday is Tuesday. Lord, I hold them up, and I'd ask that you would keep speaking with them. Keep speaking with them. You have anointed them. They are still anointed. Show them, Lord. Show them the path for them. Lord, I hold up my special little children, John and Ruth, in Kenya, 
and I further pray for total healing from malaria and typhoid. Total healing. Be gone, you fever spirit. Be gone every, every single bit from the people of Kenya, particularly in the Pakot tribe where, I, where I'm familiar. In the Lord Jesus' name, I'd ask, Lord, you would heal people from this threat of this virus. Lord, bring truth to them. Bring the right medicine, if needed, that will help with the healing. Lord, we rebuke this in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Lord, it is our desire to be strong witnesses for you today. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us to reach out to those who are just they are, they've got fear just almost overturning them. We rebuke this spirit of fear that's trying to take the whole country down, many countries down, the whole world down. And we recognize this is your time, Satan. We've read the prophecies. We've read Revelation but that won't stop us as righteous believers in Christ Jesus to keep on praying according to the word of God and to see many, many wonderful things happen all in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, Doug and Sharon bring healing and strength to them. We hold them up, Lord. I haven't seen all that all of you have written, but I'm in agreement with you on every prayer request. We will agree in unity as a believing, powerful, spirit-led body this morning. Amen and amen. Love you all so much. Have a powerful day in the Lord. Bye-bye.